Hey everybody, it's Aaron Driver and Josh Orr here again with our July Wine Club video. Uh, this month's tasting, we had to do some just classic Americana wines. Um, and so the first one is Chateau Montalana Chardonnay, and the second, the red here, is the Ridge Montebello Vineyard Cabernet. Uh, both of these wines are crazy iconic, crazy like history, and just super important not only to their own estates and their own legacy, but to the legacy of American wine in general. Both of these were participants in the famed Judgment of Paris. Chateau Montalena was the wine that won the best overall score. And thanks to creative marketing, uh, really pushed American wine onto the international stage and challenged this kind of old idea that you can only make great wine in the old world. Um, or at least that's how the fable and story goes. So uh, Josh, do you want to jump in really quickly? And start yeah, talking absolutely. About these? Um, so we're having the 2018 uh, Chateau Montalena Chardonnay, um, and this wine is a great example of what Chateau Montalena brings to the table. Um, they're located in the north of Napa in the area called Calistoga, um, but the vineyards for this are actually in the south. They pulled the fruit from an area in Oak Knoll, um, so a little cooler section, but it is Napa Valley Chardonnay. Um, and there's a few winemaking techniques that they utilize that I'll let Aaron talk about that help give them a style that can be very competitive when put up against the likes of some of the best Grand Cru Burgundy like it was in the Judgment of Paris. And so it's a unique style in terms of California Chardonnay as a whole um, and a really beautiful style, but not your, um, I guess, archetypal as you would call it for California Chardonnay. But that didn't really matter because in this tasting that essentially sent California wine into the stratosphere and put it on the map for not only international um, uh, wine aficionados, but in the US, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it stood out as um, the best of the best in the white flight. It's pretty cool to see. Um, and as Aaron was saying, this, this tasting, this Judgment of Paris, helped catapult um, these wineries that participated as well as California wine as a whole onto the international scene and onto the um, minds of the American public. That, that little blip that was published in Time Magazine <laughs> all of a sudden caught fire and caught lightning in a bottle and all of a sudden people started taking California um, wine more seriously. And it's pretty cool to see the ripple effect of that over time. Yeah. Um, and and Montalena Mono, certainly uh, embodies that. And if you've seen the movie Bottle Shock, they talk about mainly Montalena and the, the, the estate, which, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the the stone like chateau is meant to be like a French chateau would yeah, be, right? That's was, what they built it after? Yeah, it was built in, and it actually says on the front of the bottle, uh, 1882 was when the building was built. And it was modeled after, uh, I think, a great Bordeaux estate. And I, I can't remember the name of the estate that it was actually picked after. But a uh, little irony there that they're most famous for a uh, Burgundian varietal on a Bordeaux-style chateau. Mm -hmm. um, well, but they originally had set up the winery um, to make Cabernet, right? Yeah, so the history here is, is that um, Bo Barrett and his son and the bank and you know the whole family got involved with this. but. They hired a gentleman to come in and make the wine. He's another famous Napa Valley vigneron. And Chardonnay was actually an afterthought. Um, so when they were going to get financing on Chateau Montalena, they put together the, the business plan for it and they realized something, that banks don't like to put together plans that don't have positive cash flow. <laughs> so Chateau Montalena Chardonnay was created as kind of like a chateau de cash flow. And it, you know, again, like Josh said, lightning in a bottle, it turned out to be one of the most iconic wines made in all the world or in the United States. Um, so made much like old school Burgundy is, where they prevent malolactic fermentation from happening, so they, they intentionally stop that. And it's in, done primarily in neutral oaks, sometimes uh, depending on vintage, there's an influence of new oak into the wine, just depending on what it needs and where, how much extra cooperage they have lying around and all of the business that goes into it. Um, but put up next to Great Pelini Montrachet or Merceau, this wine certainly holds its own. And that, that was the case in the tasting of Paris as yeah. far as being put up against Grand Cru Burgundy and yeah. um, the best of the best as far as Premier Cru Merceau. Um, and it's an interesting style too for those of you who haven't had it. I definitely encourage you. Um, it'd be nice if you could figure out a way to um, twist Aaron's arm for two or three bottles because taste this now <laughs> and feel how wound up it is as far as there's a lot of like green apple and apple skin kind of character. There is the typical Chardonnay like creaminess and toasty kind of French bakery character to it. but it's wound up and so it's something that um, if I want a Chateau Montalina Chardonnay I want it with like five to eight years of age to let it kind of mellow out and soften um, yep. some of that, that that tightness that kind of wound up 
intensity, yeah. so to speak. And so I think that speaks to the fact that it has some, some um, whether intended or not, French roots. And um, that's why it showed so well in that tasting. And so that's Chateau Montalina Chardonnay. Well, um, yeah, the other thing I like to think about this wine is wine, this wine in comparison to its comp set in Burgundy, you'd have to put a one or a two in front of the price mm -hmm. in order to find something of comparable quality level. Yep, absolutely. So. Thank you. You gotta, you gotta love the escalating <laughs> price of Burgundy now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, seriously. The wines that it went up with uh, against in the actual Judgment of Paris, um, some of them are equivalent of mortgage payments. Most yes. of them are the equivalent of really nice car payments. So you're looking, you know, seven hundred, a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, depending on if you're trying to find those wines nowadays or based on the plus, producers. Or yeah. Plus plus. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Rouleau and, and Laflave are very difficult to come by, and when you do, yes. you need to fork out the change. So and a very impressive showing and, and part of why this helped catapult California wines onto the map. So, um, should we move on to the red? Yep, let's do it. All right, so with the red, we're moving from Napa to, if you can see down there in the bottom, really small detail, uh, the Santa Cruz Mountains. So this is Ridge Estate. Ridge makes wine in a couple different places. You may have seen or been to the winery in the Dry Creek Valley, um, but this is their home estate in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It was established by a group of scientists, PhD uh, engineers um, from, I believe it was Stanford, and they essentially combined um, efforts and money to purchase this estate. Uh, and one of them happened to have some farming experience, which cracks me up because he was the um, Mormon from Utah. Um, <laughs> they put him in charge of winemaking, which also cracks me up, but we'll go with it. He had farming experience, and in the end, I mean, we're talking about Ridge is iconic, so something worked out. Yeah. Um, but they had access to some pretty um, phenomenal terroir. Elevation plays a big role here. You're really high up in the mountains. You have great sunlight and great soil setup. And it just, they modeled their vineyards, um, their uh, vines that they planted, their viticulture, their winemaking after a very prominent individual in the Santa Cruz Mountains, which is Martin Ray. Um, and then they had the fortuitous opportunity to hire one Paul Draper in the late 1960s <laughs> and Paul Draper would be on the Mount Rushmore of California winemakers if they were to make one um, he is a legend in every um, aspect of the word and so with that you get this wine which is their estate Cabernet so it's baby Montebello if you've ever heard the term Montebello when you see Ridge Montebello it'll say it right here but this is from the same vineyard as Aaron stated Montebello vineyard right yes. here um, it is the same vines, it's just a selection. Um, it even says, I love, I was talking with Aaron before we got on and filmed, I love the detail with which they um, uh, share information on the back. And so it talks about the soil types, it talks about the growing season. They even have gone as far as to list an ingredient, um, put an ingredient label on the list, which is pretty funny for a wine bottle, but it's, it's them showing transparency. Yeah. Um, and it, they also talk about here how each lot from the vineyards are kept separately until at the end they blend them. And that's when one becomes Montebello yep. and one becomes the Estate Cabernet. And so this is a diamond in the rough in terms of quality for value. Yes. It is it is just, I mean, if you want to try a baby version of one of the most iconic Cabernets in California and in the U.S., this is a great wine to do it. But we were just talking about this too before we started about this wine is so much more delicious young and accessible young than the big Montebello estate wine. So the big Montebello estate wine, I, I mean, in my opinion, I've had it, I've only had it going back to the 80s. You know, the wines are just so wound up and you know, even the early 2000s are still kind of in my world undrinkable. Um, this has just such fruit, like it has a beautiful fruit forwardness and just suppleness to it that makes me want to drink a bottle or two. Uh, now, instead of when I taste Montebello, I realize I'm tasting one of the greatest wines in the world, but I have to drink it in a decade or two decades. Well, and what's interesting about Ridge in terms of the tasting, the Judgment of Paris that we were talking about, the Montebello was actually the gentleman who hosted the tasting, Stephen Spurrier, who was the wine um, uh, professional and, and the critic who set the whole tasting up. It was his favorite to win the actual event. He thought Ridge was going to emerge victorious. It didn't. Um, until they reenacted the tasting later, and that's when it actually emerged victorious. But he thought Ridge was going to showcase the best out of any of them and prove to be the, the best red in the flight. Um, uh, Stag's Leap SLB kind of snuck in, but uh, I think that's a tribute to what Aaron was talking about. Ridge, with a little bit of time when it mellows, um, really shows its, its beauty and the, the prestige of that site. And so when they redid the tasting, I think it was 30 years later, yeah. 
Ridge took the cake yep. and just crushed everyone. And so that shows you what Ridge is capable of um, in terms of uh, what they have going on at that site way, way, way up high in the Santa Cruz Mountains. If you yeah, get a chance to drive there, it's a pretty crazy drive. I know people actually bike up that road to it. Yeah, but that's insane. You are well, well above the fog and uh, the fog layer up there. So you, when I think of Santa Cruz, I tend to think of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from lower where they get, where the fog and everything helps regulate the temperature up there. When they're growing Cabernet and, you know, these Bordeaux varietals so high up, like they get plenty of physiological ripeness, but they are in such an awesome spot and have such awesome terroir that the wines really, even in ripe vintages, like 18 across the state, it was warm have just major balance to them. So lovely, lovely wines. Uh, we hope that you enjoy them. These are two just absolutely American icons. And these are definitely wines that are drink now and provide lots of pleasure, but you can also throw into your cellar or, you know, two cellars, depending on where you want to keep your stuff and drink it over the next decade or two. Mm -hmm. so, so cheers. Thank you. Cheers guys. Thank you so much.